I'm a qualified nurse. I've been qualified for several years and I work in several hospitals in the UK. I wanted to be a nurse since the age of four. I'm passionate about it. It must be in my blood. First and foremost, my rule book comes from the Nursing and Midwifery Council's Code of Conduct. My main frustration as a nurse in practice is that the system in which I work often contradicts this code. Managers force nurses to put targets before morals and the needs of our managers before those of our patients. The following accounts come from a series of records I've made during my nursing career. Mainly I made them for my own learning and development, but also as a way to communicate to managers any concerns that I had on the shop floor. Hopefully it will help to improve NHS care for everybody. I don't think it's nurses not caring anymore. I think it's mainly owing to a target culture and an obsession with cost-cutting measures. I think that the system needs to change. We don't need to blame anybody or point fingers at individuals. It's the system that needs to change. In these accounts, confidentiality has been maintained by altering certain details so that individual patients and staff cannot be identified. The accounts do not relate to one particular ward, emergency department or hospital trust. All events have been appropriately reported within the hospitals and to the CQC where necessary. One of the matrons came to the ward and told us that in two hours there was going to be an infection control audit, which meant that senior managers were going to come to the ward and check that it was as clean as it should be. She sent one of the healthcare assistants into the sluice to clean all the commodes in preparation. When they arrived on the ward, the nurse in charge was told to stop her drugs round and to show the managers around the ward. At the end of the audit, one of the senior managers said to the nurse in charge, Did you polish those commodes clean? And the nurse said, No, but I got one of the health cares to before you arrived. And they both laughed as the managers left the ward. The impact on patients is that they didn't receive their medications on time because the sister was told to do something else instead. So her priority was to show the managers around the ward not giving the patients their pain relief. After witnessing this, I made a record in my notes as an example of how managers do not understand what ward life is like for the nurses and how they openly and blatantly ignore problems that may exist just to achieve a target. I felt shocked at the nurse in charge that she was so easily diverted away from what she should be doing just because managers were present. And I was also amazed at how openly they admitted the whole infection control audit had been a farce because we'd prepared for their arrival. The incident highlights how managers force us to put their needs before those of our patients. This incident relates to an emergency department and the four hour target. The four hour target is something that was instigated by the government to ensure that patients are either discharged home or admitted to a ward within four hours of attending an accident in the emergency department. If a patient stays in the department for longer than four hours, this is considered a breach. This particular shift was very busy. Patients were queuing in the corridors waiting to see a nurse. The nurse in charge was getting more and more stressed because they were unable to get patients out of the department within the four hour window. Their attention was completely turned to getting patients out of the department. As a result, for us shop floor nurses, the task became even harder and the department seemed to be dangerous. For example, I had a gentleman who arrived in one of my cubicles. He had cardiac chest pain, so he was at risk of maybe having had a heart attack. And he hadn't had an ECG, even though he'd been in the department for two hours. This is a basic nursing care test. Another example of how dangerous the department had become was the fact that I overheard a charge nurse tell an old lady on a trolley with a broken leg that she couldn't have any more pain relief as she'd already had some. This wasn't true, 
but I knew that this charge nurse, who's usually an excellent nurse, just didn't have time to get the pain relief for the patient because his attention was solely um, on getting patients out of the department within the four-hour target. Well, firstly, I'd like to point out that I went to the old lady with the broken leg and I gave her pain relief. Even though that was unsubordinate to my seniors, it was what I thought in line with my nursing and midwifery code of conduct. And then, in terms of the fact that patients weren't getting ECGs in a timely fashion, I went to inform the nurse in charge. He treated me as if I was annoyance for hassling him with this problem and said that there was nothing that he could do about it and that was the end of it. I felt that the priorities of the senior staff were completely on the four-hour target and preventing breaches and not with managing the safety of the patients actually in the department. I was working in an emergency department and I had two patients. One was an 83-year-old bedbound man with Alzheimer's and the other was 31-year-old with abdominal pain. The old man had been in the department for six hours, therefore he had breached. He'd been in the department longer than four hours. The 31-year-old lady needed to be admitted, but I explained to her that there was a long wait for beds and she would probably be waiting a long time. She said she didn't mind, she was comfortable at the time, so I wasn't worried. Then I was told a bed was available for the 31-year-old. She had only been in the department for three hours, so I didn't understand how she could have a bed, but the man who'd been waiting for six hours didn't. So I went to the nurse in charge to ask what the situation was, and I was told that I had to send the lady, because that would prevent a breach. In other words, it wouldn't show on our target figures as a failure she would have gone to the ward within the four-hour window. But I explained that the man who was bed-bound and at risk of pressure sores on an A&E hospital trolley was a priority to be taken to a hospital bed as soon as possible. After witnessing this, I knew that I was supposed to respect the decisions of senior nurses. However, I also knew what I was being asked to do wasn't in line with my nursing and midwifery code of conduct, which is always to put the care of your patients first. So I was in an invidious position, really. And in this instance, I had to argue with the nurse in charge that this gentleman should be the priority for the next available bed. And luckily, the nurse listened and the man went to the ward soon after. I was made to feel that I was acting above my station and that I was meddling in the complex matters of patient management. And yet at no point was I treated with respect, being the only person who is in direct contact with the patients, therefore perhaps the only person who really understands the complex matters of patient management. I think that people in charge react in this way because they are given pressures from above, from managers above them, to meet targets and they know that us frontline nurses don't have the same pressure. In fact our pressure comes from our patients and the nursing and midwifery code of conduct so there's a disconnect. Our priorities are different and that causes a lack of teamwork and you can't move forward. This made me feel shocked about how unashamed and blatant managers can be about their decision making to put targets before patients. They justify it because they say that if they don't meet their targets then they'll get fined by the government. So to meet the targets is better for all. But does anyone ever question this? Does anyone ever question the fact that we're fined for not meeting these targets? Which seems like a ludicrous system altogether.